now Take a step outside and seize the day now Set aside your worries, it's so Welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing the weekly cook and clean with me. I'm gonna try my best to keep up with these and I have a super fun recipe I'm so excited to share with you all. Um, it is a beautiful fall day here in North Carolina. We've got the back door open. I'm just hanging out in my slippers and my sweater. I've been drinking my coffee. Since this is a cook and clean with me along with the recipe I'm gonna share with you today, I'm also going to clean out my pantry. I have it all nice and organized but with it being my pantry and grocery area the bins get kind of crumbs and random things in them and so I need to take the bins out and wash them all up and just kind of sweep and mop out the bottom of the pantry so that's my goal to clean along with this cooking today I am making a blooming quesadilla platter this is actually something that my husband requested he saw it on a photo on Facebook and in our house we eat a lot of low carb or keto friendly things so I'm going to show you how to do that but this is really simple to make for anybody you don't need to be doing keto or low carb or anything to do this and I'm really excited about it so for the next minute I'm gonna explain how to do it low carb if you guys aren't low carb you can just skip over the next minute or so and just go on with the recipe because you definitely don't need to be low carb to eat this okay so most people that do keto have a certain carb amount that they like to stay under in a day's time for myself I eat in the second half of the day so this will actually be like one of my main meals that I eat so I actually grabbed these tortillas they're carb balance if you're not keto you could obviously just get regular tortillas um, and they are five net carbs per tortilla so since I knew that my carbs would be a little bit more than normal for one meal for this meal I just made sure today that I didn't eat a lot of excess carbs in the other things that I was eating kind of like a give and take and even if it would push me a little bit out of ketosis it's not going to push me like far out of ketosis it's not going to kick me out the other thing that you would need to practice if doing this with low carb and keto is that you would just want to make sure that you don't go over your serving size and not blow yourself out of the water these are something i definitely would not recommend eating on a daily basis while doing keto but as a treat and to kind of get away with having something a little special and a little extra these work out perfect so before I have a bunch of police on me about the fact that these aren't technically keto, there's my little explanation and let's get on with the recipe. So this is a chicken based quesadilla and I got myself a big pack of chicken over here. I'm only gonna need about half of this because you want roughly like two cups of cooked chicken. What I'm gonna do is actually put it into my pressure cooker so that it cooks up really quickly and I can shred it up. A couple other ways you could do this is you could buy canned chicken. You could also get a rotisserie chicken or or just slow cook a whole chicken either way you want about two cups of cooked chicken I already went over the tortillas that you'll need but you're going to need about 20 taco sized tortillas to make the entire blooming part of the tortilla next you need a lot of cheese and I mean a lot of cheese <laughs> These are definitely not dairy free but I have a block of Monterey Jack a block of Colby Jack and a block of extra sharp cheddar. You're gonna shred them all up. In total, you want about six cups of cheese. You could do three cups of two different kinds. I just decided to do two cups of three different kinds. You also need an onion. Doesn't really matter what kind. I love purple onions. So I have a purple onion. And then you'll also need one bell pepper. Again, doesn't really matter what color, just whatever's your favorite. This is an extra thing. You don't need it, but I'm definitely gonna be using it because we like it. And that is fresh cilantro to garnish the top. All right, so I'm actually gonna be whipping up my own taco sauce because that's what goes into this. Because a lot of bought taco sauce have sugar added to them and I obviously don't want sugar in my sauce just to make it a little more healthy so I have a can of diced tomatoes it is 14 ounces 14 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes and then the four spices that you're going to need is garlic and onion powder chili powder cumin and then you'll need some salt and you'll also need a splash of vinegar to make the taco sauce and then at the end you might want sour cream guacamole and salsa to dip your quesadillas into okay so I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the chicken and stick it in the pressure cooker so we can get it shredded up to get everything rolling before I put the chicken into the pressure cooker I just chopped it up into big chunks that way it was already kind of half shredded for me and it would be super simple 
simple to just break apart and shred up. Then I cut up the pepper and the onion into um, diced size, I guess, and added that to the chicken as well. I also added a cup of water to my pressure cooker and then I put it on the poultry setting. To make up the taco sauce, I just put the can of diced tomatoes into the blender, a splash of vinegar, a teaspoon of cumin, chili powder, onion powder, and garlic powder each. You could add a little more of each of these if you prefer. Once I had it all blended up, I just put it in a jar and set it aside until my chicken was finished. Once you have all of your cheese shredded, if you're shredding it yourself, you'll want to set that aside for when you assemble everything. You want to preheat your oven for 375 and then get your area ready to assemble your platter. I put a small glass bowl in the middle of mine just to kind of help gauge where I was putting everything as I rolled it all up. Once it bakes up for about 30 minutes, you will have a perfect fajita platter. These were so extremely good. My girls even loved them and they would be great for parties and events. I actually ended up waiting till a different day to tackle the pantry. First of all, I emptied it all out, took everything out of all of the bins and then wiped down the bottom of the pantry. I then scrubbed out each of the bins with a scrub brush and dish soap and man did they need it through the move and everything. They just didn't get cleaned very well and just needed to be cleaned really good. Then I went through everything and put the stuff back that I wanted to put back into the pantry. It also gave me kind of an opportunity to throw out old stuff and that kind of thing. I do need to keep a habit of doing this more often. Thanks so much for watching you guys. If you make this recipe, I would love to know if you like my take on it. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video.